Operation Exodus Mississippi. What is OEM? It is the only real solution for descendants of slaves born in America. The original Mississippi campaign. Anything else is fraud and will not work. It is the process of bringing into reality the promised land that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. spoke of. It is simply inspiring the so-called black residents of the state to take advantage of their voting power, having a large population to take control of the political systems, laws of their state, to benefit themselves, of which brings them power, power they never had before. OEM has nothing to do with religious, personal, or political beliefs. Just wanting to make life less oppressive in this geographical area so blacks can feel safe and operate with less resistance due to racism, forming a type of safe haven sanctuary state for black people. OEM doesn't advocate trying to force the populace to do anything they don't wish to do, but offer advice and suggestions to improve their state for all citizens, regardless of race, creed, color, sexual orientation, etc. Some of the benefits of OEM could be, one, as a state, you could finally request reparations due to the enslavement of our ancestors from the federal government. Being such, monetary or other awards will not be going to individuals or groups, but a state now in control that benefits this people to help build what this people need to act like true, free, liberated, as well as equal citizens of this nation. Two, having control of the governor's mansion, you can control the state national guard as well as all law enforcement of the state. Three, create a different way of living among the people to alleviate homelessness and other poverty, requesting the citizens more modestly, opening up more jobs, more time with loved ones. Four, offer true rehabilitation to those in criminal systems so monies on jails can go to more beneficial purposes. Five, state can request the federal government to release all political prisoners in federal custody or those forced into asylum in foreign lands to be returned to or handed to Mississippi so they can live out the rest of their lives in dignity. Six, Mississippi will become a true work state where every man, woman, and child can say they had something to do with the success of their state instead of credit going to a select few. Seven, being an agriculture state already, we can specialize in the production of pure organic foods that is good for our citizens, also can be exported to other states and around the world, having a want for cheaper organically grown food products. Eight, success of OEM will become the blueprint and example, having not enough room for all who now wish to move. So our eyes must be set upon perhaps Alabama, Georgia, and the like. Nine, a state can function independently from the federal government forming relations and deals in foreign lands like Africa to benefit the state and nation. The so-called black people of America have never had true power that others respect. But by doing this, we will get the respect and power we have never experienced and the doors that will open due to just taking control of your life, we can't imagine. Please be reminded, if not for the domestic terrorism, targeting black people of the South and the federal government refusing to protect its citizens, forcing them to flee, this OEM campaign probably would have been made a reality generations ago. So all you and I will be doing is the work our ancestors wanted to do but couldn't do due to domestic violence from other citizens. Join and organize Operation Exodus Mississippi today or become a supporter. Hey, how y'all doing? So y'all here, here to invite you to come on over to the new This Is Assembly channel right here on YouTube. All the current videos on GL's channel, which is me, have been updated and uploaded to this assembly. New videos, as well as the old, are there. In fact, there are two new videos there at this moment with 
two more soon to follow and all the other new videos soon after that. So come over to this assembly. I provided a link below for you to come there and see all the content and continue learning on this journey with me. So y'all, thank you for your patronage and I look forward to seeing you there. I mean. Today, stand on your feet. This is Allah's beloved servant among us. The enemy cannot have him. You were warned by God, do not touch my anointed one. Farrakhan has been on the battlefield fighting for the liberation of the oppressed for 64 years. He's a lover, not a hater. He's here because of God's grace, God's mercy. Help me to receive your friend, your brother, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. God is the greatest. Praise be to Almighty God for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. He is God's divine reminder to us. He's here to give us guidance. He's here to warn the government of America. Leave black people alone. We are God's people. We are God's chosen people. And we are living in our time. So, let's go to this past Sunday. Anybody watch it? Did you watch it? The culminating, they used to, they used to call it, I don't think they had the nerve to say it this year, but the culminating event of Black History Month, Savior's Day, 2019. perfect music but it ain't summer yet but it's a madness so um minister farrakhan you know <laughs> i mean you know what i'm saying you gotta just it's taken me all week just to sit down and do this reflecting on The duration and the uh, time release and the uh, significant progression of the insanity. There's a couple of things that Minister Farrakhan needs to understand at this point. And then perhaps he can just stop with the spells. You know, the spelling... Uh, let's just get right to it I, I I couldn't give a fuck about you know 
someone trying to kill you. I'm, I'm not trying to kill you or putting any telling anyone to do such. You know, I think I think the best way to handle a person like you is to ignore you. Ignore you. That that's what would do it for you, I think. Okay? So the reason I speak to you this way and to the sisters who wanna who wanna hoop and holler and they wanna open up the they wanna open up oh yeah I watch it. Yeah, I watch it. You wanna open up the speech and you wanna have little young sisters opening up the speech, defending you. Let me tell first of all, why do you need defense? Why do you need defense from other black people? Gone are the days when you all couldn't wait for a white person to say something about Ms. Farrakhan. You know, you, you was ready. Gone are those days. That's not who you're trying to defend this man against. You all are very, very much involved in defending and intimidating your own black people. Okay? Melanated people. Alright. I listened to the whole four hours. Uh, your background that you tried to ramble through, you didn't have hardly any emotion to it. So I don't know what that's about. I don't know if you've lost your emotion in regards to your background through your Dianetic sessions, but you spoke about it like you was talking about somebody else's childhood. You didn't even talk about it like you was talking about your own childhood. This is what I have, I have an issue about your childhood. This is my issue. Your mother. Could you talk about her just a little bit more? Just a, just a tad? Just a tad? Uh, she was a single mom, right? or something of that nature, or another dude was involved, or what, you don't hardly even talk about your mother. You don't talk about your mother. There's no capstone, no headstone. In regards to information that I found for your mother's grave, Yeah, she was a uh, a uh, a uh, a uh, 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 Anna May or whatever. Oh God, whatever her original name, uh, her government name was. But you changed her name to Samaya Farrakhan. So whoever's looking for your mother online, y'all, it's Samaya Farrakhan, Mother Samaya Farrakhan. S A M S A M A Y Y. It's two. It's either two A's or two Y's. It's something. You know who your goddamn mother is. Now, why is that important? Well, it's important because I've seen some other videos floating around. I'm spitting. You got. That's how. That's how much I care about your 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 knives and your your swords and your intimidation. So, anyways, um, the reason why it's important. Is because people are trying to say and put out information that your mother is my skin tone, that your mother is some uh, fair skin or some brown skin woman. No, your mother was a heavily melanated, dark skin woman, which means that your father is either very, 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 very light or white. So, if you called that little um, rambling that you did uh, uh, some type of ex ex explanation of your childhood, no, sir. No, sir. Come, ag come again. Come again. Let's go. Let's get back. I was born in New Orleans. Um, yeah. Uh, on the ninth. Yeah. Uh, six nine. Six nine. Nobody fucking scared of you. Whatever ancestral power you feel that you have, see, because all you tout about, all you shout about is what you built in this realm. 
okay what you what you've done in this realm what mass media has helped you to do in this realm including the million man march mass media corporate controlled media help you to do the million man march help you to be successful with the million man march i don't want to hear nothing else about it because that's mass media and the fucking government's uh uh uh, uh work they gave you the washington mall that's their work that's not your work. It would, matter of fact, it would have been better if it would have been in a fucking field somewhere. How are you going to do it on the, on the mall? And then after that, we go through about two or three more holocausts. No, sir. So, um, yeah, uh, you're not intimidating nobody. Okay, there is ancestral power, okay, on many of us in this realm, and you not intimidating no one. The first time I heard, you want to know the first time I heard the word ma'at? The first time I heard the word ma'at was because a sister in the mosque named her child ma'at. That's how I heard it, and then I never heard it again, maybe till fucking... 10, 20 years later. You want to know how pissed off that makes me? That I could sit in your fucking rooms, I could sit in your your little lodges, your little moss lodges, and you don't even mention my eye. All the years I sat in there. So, fuck you. So, um, that's what I had to say. And to your family, and to your fat ass uh, daughters, you know what they need to do? This, this is what they need to do. Huh? They need to do a fucking wait, lose a hundred pound weight challenge, and then give the money, make some money, and give it to charity, and go find some black women to take care of. Okay? So that's what I have to say. Um, and yeah, Ishmael, with your little yoni symbol or whatever you were doing at the end, you should be ashamed of yourself. And I'm, uh, uh, I'm gonna let everyone know not to follow you anywhere. I, we, this is the yoni. The yoni's right here. Yoni's right here, all right? You ain't got no Yoni. You got a Yoni or something you need to let us know? So what are you the fuck are you doing a Yoni symbol for? You nut. So anyways, um, yeah. Ha, ha, that, that, was, that was my reaction to save his day. Um, oh, uh, oh my God. Oh my God, almost forgot the most important thing. Oh. <laughs> Y'all, I'm not making, am I making something up? Did I make something up? So instead of having Savior's Day, the regular freaking day, which is normally the 26th, or the weekend of the 26th, this year, Sunday falls on the day of Khalid's death, of Dr. Khalid Muhammad's death. This year, Savior's Day, I'm going to say it one more time, they, they moved the day, they actually had to move the fucking day to the day that Khalid passed away, Dr. Khalid passed away. So, so but let's look at this. So, Dr. Khalid passes away on February 17th. Malcolm X was shot and killed on February 24th, and Elijah Muhammad supposed to have passed away on February 26th. Just so you know, go get your satanic ritual calendar. It may not be yours, but please look it up. Just so you know, when you start seeing these people dropping around these dates, that those are satanic ritual days. Okay? So, yeah. Peace out. When soul singer and black activist Sam Cooke wrote the lyrics to his song, A Change Is Gonna Come, it was very direct and to the point. With some changes to it, the song was still digestible. In the year 2019, black folks continue to go through the change rather than direct the change. A community activist named Talik Ibn Rod has made an appeal similar to what Sam Cooke was asking for. A change. It's said that the meek shall inherit the earth. We ask when.
When will the landlords give the meek a free lease? Mr. Edmondrod is humbly asking for the state of Mississippi. President Trump has already had sit-downs with the wrong representatives of the black community. How about a real discussion with a true grassroots African-American? Join and organize Operation Exodus Mississippi today or become a supporter. <laughs> All righty then, all righty then. Here we go, here we go. Man, you just don't know how long it's been taking for me to try to get this uh, this video together because uh, I didn't want to do a screen share. So I was trying to uh, download the video five hours long. The software that I was using kept messing up because the video five hours long it didn't want to download it but finally I believe everything is ready to ready to go so uh, on that note let us get busy on this busy okay let us examine let us analyze just a little bit what we call the Savior's Day address of Minister Louis Farrakhan. I'm going to, I don't want to try to uh, be disrespectful. I don't want to try to be biased or nothing like that or prejudiced. I just want to raise some questions and make some observations and let you and let you and, and the world, those who uh, see these words, let you be the judge. Now, of course, there are many of you out there in TV land. You love this man, and no matter what he says, no matter what he does, you are going to embrace him. So I'm not, I'm not, and I really am not speaking with you. I want to, I want to reach out to those who I believe, or who I know, could be a potential victim of a person that does not have our best interests at heart. That's my observation. That's my experience. I can speak because I was under his leadership for, for seven to nine years, seven strong years, and then perhaps maybe a week last two years, making a total of nine. And out of the whole nine years, I got nothing. The only thing I got out of the whole deal, maybe, I got a, 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 a bean pie that they probably was getting ready to throw away anyway. I did not get nothing from this organization. My community has nothing. Nine years, my community has nothing. The Nation of Islam sits in my community right now and has done nothing since the 1980s. You can't tell me nothing. You have to show me something of substance. You have to show me some real evidence. How you feel. And we, we going to do this. I always talk about what we going to do. But it never gets done. That's the type of mentality that we have here. And it's just like the way that y'all like to wait on Jesus. You waiting on fire, God. Jesus is going to return. It's been 2,000 years, 2,000, not 200 years, not 200 days, 200 minutes. It's been 2,000 years, and you have people that claim I'm waiting on Jesus. And the same thing with Louis Farrakhan. He's going to do this. He's going to do that, and they still waiting. I can't do that. I'm sorry. If I'm wrong, I don't want to be right because I cannot do that. If you're going to 
if you're going to tell me you're going to fix me a breakfast sandwich right now, then I expect the breakfast sandwich right now. I don't expect it two minutes from now. I don't expect it five minutes from now, five hours from now. You said, I'm going to give you a breakfast sandwich right now. So where is it? I'm not going to keep doing this. We're not going to play this game. This is a game that deceivers play. String along stuff. They offer you these false promises and give you false hope. And you just hold on because you have the faith and you believe. If I have faith and I believe and I'm waiting on this breakfast sandwich, I'm still going to be hungry. I still, I'm still not getting fed. If you depending upon Jesus or Firecon, y'all be some starving dead son of a gun. That's just the bottom line. And I don't want others to get caught up in this trap. If you want to be in that trap, you want to do that because that's your faith and you've got to believe when well, you do that. But the people and even I, I had the right to hear an alternative. Unfortunately for, for me, there was no alternative voice for me to listen to. So now, it's my duty and all those who know better, we've been through the ringer. Now let us raise our voices and speak so others don't go through the ringer and waste your time and your money and your effort and even your belief on that which is never going to do nothing for you. I want to send a shout out to my sister that uh, I did. I hope that she didn't mind. I put her words in this video. My sister, I don't, I can't pronounce your your name that you're using, sister. I'm, I'm just going to say, our soul sister, Connie Muhammad. Send a shout out to sister, soul sister, Connie Muhammad. She did a very nice breakdown on, and she did watch the four-hour keynote address by Minister Louis Farrakhan. Now, I did watch the four-hour uh, keynote address. But I really didn't pay a whole lot of attention. I heard bits and pieces. I was doing things and I was just listening while I was working and doing other things. But there are some key elements and maybe as we go through this, there are some things that uh, I just would like to bring to our attention for us to, to, to observe something to think about. We don't think about. See, I'm not loyal to no man. I'm not loyal to no train of thought. I'm talking right now, but I could change my mind tomorrow because I'm looking for the truth. That's all I'm concerned about. Listening for the truth. Begging, wanting the truth. The truth can, can make you look good. The truth can also make you look bad. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I actually listened to the four-hour five-hour broadcast of Savior's Day 2019 by Minister Louis Farrakhan, Nation of, of Islam. As you know, there are other people who are also having Savior's Day. You have the Son of Man, you also have Eric Muhammad and probably some others out there who are celebrating what we call Savior's Day. But I want to tell you, before I continue, I want to tell you, after you listen to Mr. Louis Farrakhan, you listen to Brother Eric Muhammad, the Son of Man, and all these, all these Savior's Day address, I would guarantee you there is only one Savior's Day related type address, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not blowing my horn, but y'all need to watch Soul Liberation Day, 2019, and I guarantee you that. If you are honest, you will conclude that Soul Liberation Day 2019 brings us something better of substance than Savior's Day, keynote address by Farrakhan or Eric Muhammad or the Son of Man or any of these Savior's Day addresses. I guarantee you if you're honest. But you know, y'all ain't y'all not gonna want to be honest. <laughs> but that's all right. Now again. I did not listen to the whole lecture. Well, I did, but I didn't. And I'm not. And, I'm, and uh, a lot of this that Farrakhan talks about, a lot of it is nothing but reruns. 
He's been saying basically the same thing since the 1980s. The same type of rhetoric, the same type of stuff. I'm not, I, I'm not interested in those things. I heard some new things that I think as Sister Connie uh, wrote me in a post, she said that really could be dangerous because this is sounding, it's getting to the point where Louis Fark, look, it's getting to the point really where Louis Farcon is starting to sound and carry himself out like, like Jim Jones or David Koresh. It's getting to that point. And that's a dangerous, that's a dangerous position. That's a that's a dangerous for people to be under that type of of uh, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? But under that 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 type of mind control, because we never know what's going to happen here, and you have thousands of people clapping. I don't even really think they under. I don't really don't even think they listen to the speech. They just love the false promises and the hope and the things and the, this pretty picture that this man paints. And that's what they are in love with. They just clapping. Are you really listening to what is being said? Do you really know what you're looking at? Or are you looking at things, as they say, through rose-colored lenses? Now, what I did notice, as always, is that Farrakhan, as he, as he goes into this speech, he's going to do a lot of bragging about himself. Very arrogant man, a lot of bragging about himself and what he thinks that he's accomplished, a whole lot of that. But if you notice, on any of his Savior's Day, you will notice that he does not brag about his real progress in the nation of Islam. Your schools, your businesses. How many people did you employ last year? How many houses did you build last year? How many houses did you build and rent out to your followers and low-income brothers and sisters so they can have a decent place to stay? Your airport, your factories, your cows and your chickens and whatever. What is the progress? What did you do last year? We know about the Million Man March. How many times are you gonna talk about it? And if you well, we'll talk about that as we're gonna get into into to that. So, of course, you have to ask for money. These people, and of course, whenever religion is is involved, it's always about begging for money. You're always talking about do for sell, do for sell. If you do it for yourself. Why are you begging for money? Do it for yourself. You do it for yourself, but you be, but you are a professional beggar. Farrakhan, that's the work that Farrakhan has done for 40 years, is he's a professional beggar to take care of his family and those who are close to him that helps him do this exploitation of descendants of slaves born in America. That's what it is. It's exploitation. You don't give a care, you don't give a dang about nobody except yourself, your family, and these other people that's helping you do this. Using, using a man who is no longer here for your own personal agenda because, look, I want to remind you, I want to remind you that Elijah Muhammad said, do not change my teachings. This coming from the man himself. No matter what, he said, do not change my teachings, but yet it's still Farrakhan is supposed to have the authority to change the teachings. That's a red flag right there. That's the reason why the Son of Man, Eric Muhammad, and all these other offshoots of the Nation of Islam, that's why they cannot get with Farrakhan because he's not, he has changed the teachings, point blank. And see, the thing about it, a lot of New brothers and sisters don't understand this because they don't know what the teachings is anyway. Their idea, their concept, how they look at what Elijah Muhammad taught is dependent upon what they heard from Farrakhan. They don't know the teachings, so they don't know what has been changed. They don't know, they don't understand why you should not do this or do that in the teachings. 40 years of what? 
So you asking all this money? Give Louis Farrakhan all this money for what? To help him continue to work. The work of doing what? Matter of fact, even if you look at the nation of Islam, I am still waiting for an answer. I'm still waiting for an answer. When you look at the nation of Islam, period, they converted people. Oh, you, you're not a drug user no more. Uh, you're not a criminal no more. Oh, that's, that's beautiful. But the, the Christian church have been doing that for a long, long time. So you're not doing nothing special as far as that's concerned. Exactly what has the nation of Islam done for the descendants of slaves born in America? What have they done for us? Nothing. Except make you a religious zombie. Make you a religious slave. You become a Muslim and you owe them something. Because if you if you uh, if you decide you don't want anything to do with that, then they get very angry at you. Don't want nothing to do with you. But we're supposed to be brothers and sisters. We brothers and sisters as long as you kiss their backside. As long as they think that you will kiss their backside. But when you don't think like them, reject what you're talking about, then it's a whole new ball game. You know, it's, explo it's exploitation. It's trickery. It's the same religious dogma and rhetoric. Feel good. Do nothing crap. Y'all should be sick of it. So with that said, let's get, let's get this party started. Let us examine, I'm not going to keep you a long time, let's examine some of this speech by Minister Louis Farrakhan. So, so here we go! All praise is due to Allah. As I take my seat, beloved brothers and sisters, the enemies of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has looked across the landscape of black America. They have looked across the horizon and they have identified that there is no other threat to their total and complete subjugation of us as a people in carrying out their plan of genocide. Abraham Foxman said the only leadership that exists now in black America is that of Louis Farrakhan. So we should think, reflect, and act, and join us as we defend the truth, defend ourselves, and defend God's anointed servant, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Beloved brothers and sisters, it gives me great pleasure and an extreme honor to present to us today an ally and a spiritual man, a man who is a Talmudic scholar, a man who is a Christian historian, and he will share with us more of the playbook and his experience with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan over this Savior's Day weekend. Help us to welcome and receive to these microphones Mr. Michael Hoffman. I greet you today in the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To the true Jews of all nations, I say Shalom and Braka Hatzlaka and Salam Aleikum. Thank you, Minister Farrakhan, for permitting me to speak at Savior's Day and for your courage and your vision. In February of 2018, the research department of the Nation of Islam, the scholars who are responsible for the magisterial revisionist history titled The Secret Relationship Between Blacks and Jews, alerted me to a segment of Louis Farrakhan's Savior's Day speech concerning the Babylonian Talmud. In that speech, he made the controversial claim that the Talmud, which is the holiest book of Orthodox Judaic believers, contained the teaching 
that Jesus, the Lord and Savior of the estimated two billion Christians on earth, was in hell being perpetually boiled in excrement. Oh, wait a minute. I think I was dozing off. Is is wait a minute. Now, am I still asleep? I was dozing off. I'm watching Savior's Day 2019, and um, it's a white guy that's talking, a, 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 a Caucasian guy, a Christian Caucasian guy. Oh, well, you know, this that's. That's Louis Farrakhan. He he does that. I don't remember. I don't remember Elijah Muhammad doing that. Now, there was a story where I am told that Elijah Muhammad invited the Ku Klux Klan to save his day. Now, the reason why that was done was because these uh, persons, these Caucasian people, actually, I, I am told, they actually wanted to give the nation of Islam land so they could separate. That was the reason for it. Let Elijah Muhammad and these white supremacists came together because Elijah Muhammad said, or he teaches, that we need to separate from them and these white guys said that's not no problem we got a lot of land here y'all take this and get the hell away from us so that's a different scenario i see i can understand you know why elijah muhammad done what he done because if this is what you want and i believe they are giving or wanted to give the nation of islam this land for free i believe i don't know how that actually went i would have to uh, speak to to this with my uh, uh, friend and my brother Omar Shabazz because he is he's the one he's for as I'm concerned he's the authority on the nation of, of Islam and the assassination of Malcolm X so if I'm incorrect please in the comment section of this video correct me but that's what I was told and I can understand but hell I mean uh, uh, Brother Omar also says that Elijah Muhammad was being controlled by a rich cracker uh, oil. I think he was an oil baron. He owned a lot of. He was a. He owned a, a fleet of trucks or whatever. He had a lot of money. He was financing the nation of Islam. So I mean, so clearly there's a lot of corruption. There's a lot of contradictions and hypocrisy going on in the nation of, of Islam, even going back to the time of Elijah Muhammad and Malcolm X did speak about he had heard or had or, or had knowledge of some something to the effect that some rich Caucasian guy was funding giving money to the nation of Islam but clearly this is 2019 we have a Caucasian person Christian and then this man is not Father Flager because Father Flager is of course one of Minister Farrakhan's best is his friend. They best is a friend. And uh, and also, there are, and a lot of these people don't want to accept the fact, and that there are, there are Caucasian members of the Nation of Islam. Minister Farrakhan even said in an interview that this was true, that there are Caucasian or pink members of the Nation of Islam I just shown you some pictures of Minister Farrakhan, uh, these uh, Latinos, and these Latinos, they don't look, they're not dark skinned like me. They look like the advice show wife. That's what they look like. Because, you know, the advice show wife is Latino. You know, 
a Caucasian Latino or or so close to white you might as well be white and bright that type of thing and these are the type of members in the nation of Islam and of course since we still suffer from self-hatred like a brother said the brothers will be attracted to those light-skinned women Latinos because we still suffer from and we still have this fantasy and we still look at whatever is light is right and whatever is black get back and if you look at the nation of Islam period all the leadership all those who are in these positions they are lighter skinned black folks the only one that was dark skinned like me probably was Khalid Muhammad and he mysteriously died and also Louis Farrakhan kicked him out you don't have that many dark skinned people anyway like that and then the only one that you had who you probably thought was a threat because he was gaining notoriety and he was climbing and you probably was becoming jealous of him like Elijah Muhammad was well, not really Elijah Muhammad because Elijah Muhammad loved Malcolm but he let these fools whisper in his ear and he began to believe the hype and he began to hate Malcolm also Malcolm want my position which was far from true everybody getting caught up in this mess but clearly you see that there are Caucasian people in the nation of Islam or so light damn near white but at the same time we talk about how that's weak that's the weaker germ of the black man the darker you are the better that you are but we're not seeking the darker we're seeking actually seeking the lighter we're not trying to uplift the darker we are we're 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 still pushing now this is not to say we should not be biased we not should be prejudiced against our our lighter skin brothers and sisters but at the same time our lighter skin brothers and sisters should understand the importance if you talk about you love black then black should be pushed out there how can I say I love black and you don't never see it so you have the nation of Islam talking blackly black this black 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 where is it haven't seen nothing since Dr. Khalil Muhammad mind you I show you a picture of Minister Farrakhan and of course Farrakhan has nothing to do with his son but his son is married to a Caucasian woman remember now the nation of Islam still consider the white man is the devil so Farrakhan's son married a, a devil a female devil according to your uh, belief system and you are smiling skinning and grinning and giggling and of course chances are she had a white mother so you have a lot of white people in Louis Farrakhan's house and y'all talk about all this stuff that he's so pro-black but you got Caucasian people all in your house they are not related to the Farrakhan and you are embraced skinning and grinning there's no sadness on his face he's smiling him and his Jewish friends and his Caucasian friends <laughs> man now this is so I mean it's so contradictory it's so fake then you have those people that have the nerve to call me a coon or a sambo or an agent or a spy I don't have no white woman living in my house I don't have a Caucasian son-in-law or daughter-in-law or biracial grandchildren or relatives I don't have that but your boy Farrakhan he gets a pass why why does he get a pass? Mm. Then you have Master Farah Muhammad himself. You know, you I hear Farrakhan say, Master Farah, whenever he try to speak like that Arabic stuff, Farrakhan always gotta try to get into it. Master Farad Muhammad. You know, <laughs> Arabs don't even talk like that. You know, you gotta put some emphasis to make people think that you really smart, that you really know the language. You don't know the language. Farrakhan out of all these years he probably can't speak no kind of fluent Arabic at all period putting on this front in front of us wow master Bismillah all that old stuff y'all you know putting on front perpetrating the fraud that's what they call it in the hood you perpetrate a fraud you putting on a show 
so that basically really you can get money. And you're putting on your show so much that people people ignore the fact that you call the white man a devil and you have devils. You have devils in your organization. You got devils in your family. Devils everywhere. Your God is a biracial. Master Farah Muhammad, his mother is supposed to be a Caucasian woman that y'all call devil and a black man. So your God is biracial, your God is half devil. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said in his teaching that, what's, well, first of all, you cannot redeem a devil. A devil is a devil. You cannot redeem a devil. Then the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said also that you cannot accept, look, see, this is your teacher, but y'all just ignore what Elijah Muhammad said. Elijah Muhammad said, don't change my teachings. And y'all just ignore what Elijah Muhammad said. He's the leader. Farrakhan is not supposed to be the leader. Elijah Muhammad is the leader. But you just ignore Elijah. Elijah said, don't change my teachings. But Farrakhan can do that. Elijah Muhammad said that you can only embrace a Caucasian person only after they have studied Islam from 20 to 25 years. Father Frager this guy that's on his podium, Farrakhan's daughter-in-law, and mother-in-law, and, and, and the father-in-law, whatever all these other in-laws is, they have not studied Islam for no 20 to 25 years. But, but these people have the nerve to call somebody like me a sellout, a coon, an agent, and a spy, and all this stuff, but I don't have all that in my house. I would not accept that because I understand the importance. The dark must be uplifted. You can do that without, without ostracizing our lighter skinned brothers and sisters. And like I say, our lighter skinned brothers and sisters have to understand that if that for hundreds of years, this dark skin has been made mockery of and things of this nature, you must do everything that you can to uplift that. You should be want to be that. And if you're a light-skinned person, you should want to mate and want to be with a darker-skinned person so if you have children, you can start darkening our so-called race, get us back black again. You can't do that with a Caucasian-looking Latino laying you laying down with. Oh, man. See, it's so fake. It's so, oh, wow. Anyway, let us, let us, let us move on. Let us move on and, and, and check out the rest of... Oh, I want to say this also. As far as... Uh, Master Farah Muhammad is concerned. Now, according to the teachings, the Nation of Islam teachings, all human beings come from up out of the black man. Hold on a second here. Try to do something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, the black woman, look. The black woman, she can produce the colors of the rainbow. From the lightest of the light to the darkest of the dark. So, my question is, why was a white woman, why was a Caucasian woman, Chosen to be the mother of Master Farah Muhammad, this God. How come? And since God is all powerful and God con controls the, the, the sun, moon, and stars, and the weather, and God got all this power, how come God couldn't use a black woman and a black man to produce a Master Farah Muhammad? You had to go get somebody that you call a devil in order to produce your Master Farah Muhammad. I already know what you're going to say, but. I'm going to continue my argument and you explain to me since God has this, all this power why this black woman couldn't produce since she could produce all the colors of the rainbow why a devil had to be used to produce a God and this God you claim is supposed to be a God of righteousness you're going to use, you're going to use a woman that represents wickedness and unrighteousness to produce 
a God that's supposed to be, that's supposed to represent righteousness. See, the whole thing don't make any sense. Let us continue. I don't want to hold us long. I just want to make some points on that, but I, I was just going through the video, saw this, had to make a little comment. Let us roll on. Let's, let's move on out of here. And as far as that go, I mean, you know. Well, we want to ask, sisters and brothers, if you would be willing to engage in an act that is an expression of love. We thank all that came today and purchased a ticket to be at the United Center. We appreciate the United Center for opening up the doors to allow us to use this facility. We wish that we could have offered this Great Savior's Day 2019 to the public for free, but it cost us a lot of money. So we thank you for giving in a purchase of a ticket donation what you've already given. But what I want to ask at this moment in time is that if you would give out of your heart what they call in church a love offering. Jesus said it like this. He said, wheresoever a man's treasure is found, there his heart will be also. What he's saying is that whatever somebody loves, they're willing to give financial support to. Well, I want to ask you, sisters and brothers, do you love and appreciate 64 years of service and sacrifice of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan? Do you love 43 years of that work to rebuild this nation absent of his father? Well, if you have that kind of love in your heart, we want to ask today that if you would send a message loud and clear, number one, to God, saying, thank you, Allah, thank you, God, for blessing us with such a divine servant and teacher and example in our midst. And then number two, let's send a message to our enemies who are also tuning in live right now to let them know that we too, we stand and we back the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan with our time, talent, and our treasure, with our mind, money, and our muscle. Can you do that for us, sisters and brothers? I want to ask, how many of you that are present will be willing to give, donate, or make a sacrifice today of $1,000 or better to help the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in this great work of redeeming our people? Who would be willing to give $1,000? If you have a 1000 send it forth to our sisters in the Ministry of Finance, and we'd like to acknowledge you. If you have a business, send the name of your business, because if you support the freedom of your people and the man of God, we want to support your business. Is that right, sisters and brothers? We have Sister Rakaya Muhammad from Rialto, California, Muhammad Moss number 2097 with a $2,000 donation. Let's give our sister Rakaya a round of applause. Okay. I got it. Who can match her? Who can match her? My sister, I see you. Come on, bring it up as soon as you can. Brother Jamil Muhammad of Moss number six, one gram of 24 karat solid gold. I don't know how much that's worth, but let's give him a round of applause. What? I don't know, but I, okay, y'all must, somebody, y'all must think it's not worth that. Y'all can do better than that, 24 grams of gold. Thank you. We also want to acknowledge our sister from Gabert, Arizona, Sister Jalila F. Muhammad says she has $2,000 to back the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the work of the restoration and redemption and resurrection of our people. I, I have, I have, I, I just received something in my hand. This, uh, I've got 10 envelopes in my hand. 10 envelopes in my hand from Brother Anonymous. He didn't want to be recognized, but he told me that he said, he said, look, for every thousand dollars you can get, 
from the audience, I'll match it with a thousand dollar donation. So I have 10 envelopes in my hand with a thousand dollars each. We need 10 people to step up and say, I have a thousand and for every time you give one, Brother Anonymous is gonna put his thousand dollars in too. We got, we got a first taker, Brother Anonymous. Brother Hashim 3X says, County Men, he has a $1,000 donation. I don't know if y'all see what I see, but I'm looking at Mother Khadija Farrakhan. She's here, sisters and brothers. The wife of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, the mother of the faithful. She's been with her husband 64 years on the battlefield, sacrificing, serving, soldiering. Let's show our love for Mother Khadija Farrakhan, the first lady of the leader of the real free world, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. She's been the wind beneath the wings of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. We thank Allah for her. We thank Allah for the Farrakhan family who has endured death threats all of that time that they've been in the cause, house firebomb. But Mother Khadija has never wavered, not one atom's weight. In her uncompromising, unyielding support, she's the prime example of what a real black woman looks like, backing her man up a thousand percent. We thank Allah for Mother Khadija Farrakhan. All praise is due to Allah. The 24 grams of gold, we just got the numeric equivalent to it. That's equivalent to $2,700. Let's give Brother Jamil another round of applause. Thank you, Brother Jamil. I have nine more thousand up here. I need nine people. I need, I need eight people, eight more people. Who else can put $1,000 toward this great cause? One Thousands the afternoon. Uh, uh, here, here, brother. 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 Can, can Farrakhan say my name? Uh, here we go. Can I, can I donate? Hey, can, can, I do, can I donate? There we go. Begging for money. Professional beggars. Professional beggars. Now, the, the Savior's Day itself has always been free to the public. The day of the keynote address has always been has always been free to the public. All of a sudden, you need to charge for tickets. Now, people are already all the believers all over the all over the world are already donating. They're already donating to this effort, raising money. And it's, it's, it's still not enough. In the 1980s, the whole nine years I was in the nation of Islam, Savior's Day was free. And it's been free. It was always free when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was here. Now all of a sudden, Farrakhan, the movie star, you got to pay me. Here, here you go. Look, okay, look. Y'all professional beggars, and I don't want to see y'all homeless. Look, there you go. There you go. There you go. Bunch of beggars. Do for self. If you do it for self, why you got to keep begging people for money the way that you do? Anyway, uh, bunch of beggars. Do for self. God does everything. If, if your God is so powerful and your God can, can make earthquakes and your God can, can cause it to rain and snow and, 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 and blizzard and tornadoes, and make the sun. Your God can do all this. What you begging for? For paper with the white man's picture on it for? So fake. Yeah, let, let's let's move on. It, it, they so religious crap. They just so fake to me. of such words being written by the press and spoken in the public 
by men and women of renown. The aim is to discredit a man by the use of false terms without any just basis. The aim is to create an environment of hostility around that man that will keep the people from hearing what he has to say. If I'm a hater, who wants to be involved in hate? If I'm a bigot, who wants to be involved in bigotry? If I'm an anti-Semite, see they're trying to discredit the power of my message by calling me names that will undercut my magnetic attraction in my own people. Evidently it's not working. Look, calling me those names is designed to undercut any support that you might want to give me. It is to alienate people from me who might desire to help me. Then it is designed to isolate me and then of course destroy my influence among black people and then ultimately the aim is to murder me. That's the ultimate aim. Now I want you all to reason with me. You won't hear me tonight call for killing anybody. But look, the idea of my being referred to as a Hitler is to plant in the minds of those who suffered from Hitler's mind and Hitler's work that we must never allow Hitler to come up again so we must never allow this man Farrakhan to grow into power that he may do to us what Hitler did to us. Isn't that something? So, brothers and sisters, the germ of murder is already sown in the heart of Jews across this nation and across the world. And those who sympathize with Jews, they have a heart now filled with murder for Louis Farrakhan. So some person is going to think, as the scripture says, that they're doing God a favor and seek my death. Isn't that something? When I spoke in the forum in Los Angeles, 19,000 black people came out. The Jewish Defense League was outside chanting to kill Farrakhan. Kill Farrakhan. Yesterday on the news, we saw them asking the question, what do you want? We want Farrakhan. How do you want him? We want him dead. Now, you can't find one word in the text of my speeches that calls for death to Jews. But I am made to look like a total wicked man and here are people calling for my death. Let me say to you, Mr. Press, and Mr. Government of America, what do you think will happen to America if anything happens to me? Today, stand on your feet. This is Allah's beloved servant among us. The enemy cannot have him. You were warned by God, do not touch my anointed one. Farrakhan has been on the battlefield fighting for the liberation of the oppressed for 64 years. He's a lover, not a hater. He's here because of God's grace, God's mercy. Help me to receive your friend, your brother, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan.
Allahu Akbar! Allahu Akbar! Six mile driving range. Can vegetarians still eat animal crackers? Another Pacifica. Safe choice, my friend. <laughs> my bad! My bad! I thought... I thought they was talking about Malcolm X. All that, you know... Creating a climate... Creating a climate where people uh, will hate you and and, and 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 call for your assassination for the murder you and thing. I thought I thought he was talking about Malcolm X at first. My bad. So okay, um, you don't like or you there's a problem when people direct anger and attention at you and seek your murder. Who do we want? Farrakhan, how do you want him dead? I remember those days. But now you done it. Like 20 years prior to this, you done it, sir. You anger people. You got them upset. Who do you want? Malcolm X. How do you want him dead? Who do you want? Malcolm X. How do you want him dead? And so that was all right for Malcolm. That you encourage dark skinned people to kill their own brother when the act when actually it's the enemy that is after you, which that should be understandable. But here you are, supposed to be a black man, and you calling for the death of another black man. And remember the teachings of the honorable Elijah Muhammad, the teachings of, of the nation of Islam is every time you see a black man, you see God. So here you are on radio, in the in the written word, even in the 90s, you happy that God is murdered. Really. But there's a problem when somebody is after you. Really. <laughs> Woo, I am so I am so I am so done and you should all feel the same way. You should be done. You these people how, it, 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 they nothing but they scam artists. They frauds. They are the real hypocrites. They are the real fakers. The only thing they want is your money. The only thing they want is to make a slave out of you. Y'all should be. Come on now, really. My brother Angel Snubnub Seven at the Reality Temple. And to give props to him, because I listen to all of Angel Snub Nub Seven's videos, I think that um, he comes from a different angle. And there's a powerful message in a lot of the videos that he put out, and I try to catch all of them. I, I look at him as a free thinker and a person that's willing to challenge those of which he don't agree with or which he may think differently from, and I really respect him for that. He's challenged KB, KMBS, and he has also challenged the black supremacy movement as well. And I have nothing against that, because that which cannot be challenged cannot be stand cannot stand and will not stand and will not survive the test of time. How many challenges we can withstand will determine how long we will be able to stand. To save us from our sins. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad added something to that. He came to save us from the sins of white people that we have been under them for over 400 years and they have made us into themselves. Jesus Christ is a new man. The old man, follow me in the scripture, you scriptural scientists. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the old man is called Adam. The new man is Jesus Christ. The old man was made from the dust of the earth, but the new man is made of a quickening spirit. Two atoms. Yeah. 
I didn't know, I didn't know, I didn't know that I was being made into something I had never dreamed that I could be. There's nobody in America like Farrakhan. Nobody stronger, nobody more fearless, nobody more courageous, nobody who will not bow down to Satan or white people in power. Brothers and sisters, you haven't met nobody like me. Elijah Muhammad made me an honorable man. All my friends that are here who have watched me grow, you have never found me lying. You have never found me cheating. You have never found me robbing. You have never found me exalting myself above any of you. If I give you my word, I live up to my word. Thank you. Whatever I promise you, I'm found giving you what I promise. I don't run after women. I have some of the finest women in the world, in the classroom, in the nation of Islam. Come and ask them, what kind of man is he? I have what God allowed me to have. But I have never gone to no woman and ask her to be nothing to me but one of my students or one of my sisters. Search around. I met a man. I met the greatest man that my eyes could behold. I offered him my life and my word is my bond. I gave up my music because I was in the mosque or the temple and he sent down a letter through Brother Malcolm. Anybody that's in music, you get out of music or you get out of the temple. Some of the great musicians that were in the mosque, they left. I was working downtown in New York at the Village Barn in Greenwich Village. I came up to the restaurant to get me a 
bowl of that wonderful bean soup. And the little brother said, oh, man, Malcolm read a letter. And I don't be lying to Muhammad is asking. If you're in music, get out. Or get out of the mosque. I was having that bowl of soup. And I put my spoon down. And I walked out to a restaurant. Took about 30 paces. And I said, I, I can live without music, but I can't live without the truth. So I turned right around, went back to finish my bowl of soup, and Brother Captain Yusuf came in. He was trying to get there so he could comfort me. But when he got there, I had already made up my mind. I didn't know it then, but the messenger was watching me. Because in 1954, he asked God for his little helper. And in 55, I showed up. But he wanted to make sure that I was that. So the first test that he gave me was, what do you love? I loved singing. I loved dancing. I loved my violin. I loved the applause of the people. But he gave me 30 days to give it up or get out. I didn't take 30 days, I took 30 steps. I don't know, I don't, I have notes, but I am determined to follow the Spirit of God. God must guide this lecture today. The Sunday after Brother James spoke, I went and I heard Brother Malcolm, and Malcolm became my teacher. I can tell you in the name of God, I could not have had a better teacher. I could not have had a better brother. I could not have had a better example than Malcolm X. about how he has not cheated on his wife so we're supposed to just we're supposed to just take his word for it he's not a liar or nothing like that we're supposed to just take his word he's he's holier than thou now there are rumors that goes back even uh, back to the 80s that there was a sister soul sister Melba Moore he was having an affair with her and of course Melba Moore was having uh, extreme money problems. The rumor is, and it's just a rumor, and see, that's the thing about a whole lot of stuff. It's just like what's, what they say in that movie, Training Day, with Denzel Washington. It's not what you know, it's what you can prove. But the rumor is out that Farrakhan took a lot of that money that I helped raise, that I, because I was there, I helped raise the money for him to give to this woman to help her out of her, 
her problems there. There's rumor that he has children in Mexico. Remember, there was a period of time when Farrakhan wasn't holy and righteous. Between, especially between 1975, 76, late 1975, 76. Remember, Farrakhan even said himself, and I heard him, so you can't tell me. Out of his mouth, he called himself a hypocrite. He called himself a hypocrite, and he said he let his, he had a beard, and he said he smoked a little bit, he drank, he went back to the ways of the world. I wouldn't be shocked if he was eating a pork chop. There's no way. Look, I am not in the temple. I'm not in the mosque. I'm not in the church. I live my life in a righteous type of manner because I feel that's the best way I want to live. So I'm not in the church. I'm still living what you call a righteous life. I'm not in the mosque. I'm still living what you call a righteous life. So Farrakhan went back to the world drinking, smoking, trying to get back into entertainment, all that type of stuff. You know why? Because that was always him anyway. So that's what a hypocrite is. A hypocrite is somebody pretending to be something they are not. That's what a hypocrite is. So even when he was in the nation, even right now, there's no evidence that we can you you don't know if that's what exactly what he is. He's a hypocrite. He admitted to himself. Elijah Muhammad told Farrakhan and a whole bunch of other suckers. One day all of you would turn hypocrite. Elijah Muhammad already knew they was hypocrites already. But when he is out of the way, when he's gone. You will be able to manifest your hypocrisy. And that's what all of them have done. You supposed to just take Farrakhan's word. Well, I didn't cheat on my wife. Look, let me tell you something. I saw a meeting where he was speaking. And Sister Khadija, formerly Bessie, Bessie uh, Farrakhan, Sister Khadija Farrakhan, I saw her sitting in her chair looking at the minister like she wanted to take a baseball a baseball bat and knock his block off. She really was, and the whole meeting, she just stared at him, looking at him real mean. I wouldn't be shocked. She was angry because she found out about his outside activities. Of course, you're not, of course, she's not going to say nothing. She's an older woman now, and she's dependent upon him to survive. So that's the way a lot of women do men. They depend on them for survival and they just look the other way. Even somebody like Beyonce, when Jay-Z cheated on her, she just looked the other way. Because women have this loyal thing. And y'all need to stop that. When somebody do you wrong, let them go. There's a song by Keisha Cole. You got, got to let you go. Go, go. You can do better, sister. But you believe, and you've been with this person for so long, you think that you can't do better. Or you think, I'm just going to stay with this fella for the sake of the children. What about the sake of you? The children are going to survive. Children survive divorce. Children survive starvation. Children survive a whole lot of stuff. You better do what's good for you. And now she's an old woman. And all her life, she could have been doing something to enjoy herself. And now she's at the mercy of this guy. And see, again, you know, rumors can be false. Rumors can also be true. But this is the thing. Now, look. Woo! Now, this is the thing. Did y'all hear what he said about Malcolm X? Oh, wow, wow, wow. Woo! There's a brother one time. He got angry at me. And uh, he told me, hey, bro, don't pee on my head and, and tell me that it's lemonade. Farrakhan is actually has the audacity to pee on your head describing Malcolm X. When we know his actions show exactly how he felt about that brother. What did Farrakhan 
Farrakhan said that those who murdered Malcolm X was fearless men. Oh, see, look. Ah, oh, well, look. It don't make any difference if the CIA done it or the FBI or whether it was Muslims according to according to, to Farrakhan. Whoever shot him, whether it was CIA agents or the FBI or Muslims, whoever done it, they was fearless men. They was heroes. That's what Farrakhan said. Way after the murder of Farrakhan, 20 some years later, showing you he still carried hatred for this man. He called Malcolm a hypocrite and a traitor. He said that Malcolm X was worthy of death. Yo, brother. I love this man. He's the best teacher I ever had. All this nonsense. Don't pee on my head and tell me it's lemonade. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. Then he called Khalid Muhammad, his brother. He betrayed him also. My uncle gave him 30 years of service. Didn't send a, a, a card of condolence or nothing. Didn't come to my uncle's funeral or nothing. And then you think that this guy is so holy and perfect and whatever? Really? He called Malcolm my brother. I love him so much. The best teacher. This is what, let me show you. Let me show you exactly what he thought about <laughs> Malcolm X. This is what he thought about Malcolm X. Right here. This is what he really thought about Malcolm X then, and that's what he thinks about Malcolm X now. Don't pee on my head and tell me it's lemonade. Brother minister, you better take that on somewhere else, and a lot of us, we're not going for it. Your actions speak loud in the word. We don't care about what you're talking about, your love. If this is your love, if this is your love, I don't want to see your hate. Get out of here with that mess. Let us move on. Really. More Farrakhan shenanigans. He's a liar. He's fake. He's a hypocrite. You got the nerve to keep Malcolm X in your mouth. Trying to prove to these people like you love that man. Your actions showing exactly how you felt about this man. Get out of here, bro. Really. I smell the urine. Hey, hey man, there ain't no lemonade. I do want to say something right now. Um, there is a YouTuber who has really got in my heart, and that is Angel Snub Nup Seven. He reminds me a lot of my father. My father died last year of a heart attack, and Angel Snub Nup Seven me out. Uh, there have been times it was a, I had made a couple of videos really attacking Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton because I didn't like that we only seem to see them when a, uh, a, a nationwide case occurs or when celebrities need, are in trouble. And I didn't like that. But Angel Snuff Nuff 7 made a video recently speaking about how we need to ban with black leaders. I don't care if they're not doing everything perfect. I don't care that we don't like certain things they do. They're the only support we have. Nobody else is stepping up and willing to be on the front lines like they are. And Angel Snuff Nuff 7 was correct. And I want to thank him for that because he may not have been directed towards me, but he may have been. But I heard what he said, and I want to thank you for that, teacher. I appreciate that. We have to bend with people. Even though I, just, I, don't, I, I do critique and I do make comments about what's going on with the black gender war, I don't hate black men. Like I just mentioned, Angel Snuffin' of Seven has gotten my heart. He's like my teacher, a mentor to me. I love him. And there are others that I love as well that I do listen to and I do last man standing is another one you know he don't comment much but I, I know he's watching and um, there are others that I admire them and those are ones you can work with those are ones that you could uh, we can unify with <laughs> He's God, but he grows just like you and me. How could he be God? Well, when he came, he measured the planet like they said he would do. 
He measured the heavens. He measured the earth. He measured the universe. He would become master of it all. Look at his footsteps. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said he visited every inhabited part of the earth. He spoke 16 different languages and wrote 10. He spoke the language of the birds. He pictured and extracted the language of the people on Mars. And he pictured to his servant a dreadful looking plane that is the greatest mechanical object ever made. It's called the wheel within a wheel that Ezekiel saw. There's a whole new civilization on that wheel. The wisdom on that wheel is so powerful that though the enemy has made the earth toxic, the water toxic, the air toxic, relationships toxic, God has the power to bring it all to a naught and heal the earth and heal the whole human family except Satan. Even dumb devils can be saved. That's why my subject was a savior is born for all of humanity. I started this conversation with you saying ain't nobody around that's like me. That's right. I'm not blowing my horn. I'm showing you what becoming a true disciple of Christ will make me. See, Farrakhan is a new creature in Christ. Satan is so powerful. That he whoops up on everything and everybody. My teacher told me one day, Allah has gone in front of you and made friends for you all the way around the earth. And at the proper time, you will meet them. God has gone in front of me and made friends for me all the way around the earth he keeps feeding me teaching me in a strange way see the Jesus that was among us his first phase was a teacher he escapes death and he goes to be with his sender his father While he is with his father, he's made by God into himself. Where Jesus is now in the position of God. Having power over wind and rain and snow and earthquakes because that's what gods do. I don't know what the hell you all were planning in Chicago for your brother, but Allah sent a cold wind after you behind. Chicago was colder than the North Pole. It was warmer at the Arctic Circle than it was in Chicago. You saw a cat trying to move. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, God 
has frozen his enemies and killed them with a cold wind. You finished today, Satan. You have no power against the God and the Jesus Christ that I represent. That's why I can tell you, watch the weather. And as fast as I get it out my mouth, he answers. I'm not ashamed to tell you that I am connected to Jesus Christ. Jesus. He taught me. Yes, sir. And he said, Brother, when you find out who you are, you're going to have to struggle to hold yourself down. I said, Wait, wait. I'm such a slow learner. No, I'm telling you the truth. I, because I never thought much of me. But God was thinking of me before I was born. Because I have a specific work to do. Now, dear Christians and dear believers, when I opened this subject, I told you that to be a disciple of Jesus, God, I've been talking that long, son. <laughs> Woo! He just got me in his hands. I, I can't help it. I can't help it. That he loves his servant and he loves you and he really wants to save us I'm almost there I said that several times but this I think this is about the next to the last time he said to me God has gone in front of you and made friends for you all the way around the earth. And I found them as I went around the earth. Uh, could you bring me uh, a packet, please? Look, some of my Muslim family, they don't believe that the minister is honored like the scripture said a prophet is not without honor except where what you got there chief oh hold that one I was in Libya And the Grand Mufti of Burkina Faso, that man, when he met me, we talked a few minutes, but he had been listening to me. He took off his fez. He's the highest spiritual leader in Burkina Faso. He studied in Syria and became the second black imam in Syria. The first one was Imam Bilal. 
1,400 years later, a, a black man becomes an imam in Syria, and he's now the principal spiritual teacher in the country of Burkina Faso. Yes, sir. So he met me, and he took it off. His head. And it fit. I'm going to ask a question. Why would a man who's the top spiritual leader in a country take off his fez and put it on my head unless he recognized? up my wig here. <laughs> now, I'll get the... That's my daughter. She's looking out for me. When I was in Nigeria, The Yoruba king, who is the king of the second largest tribe in Nigeria, he uh, flew from London to meet me. When I went to where his headquarters is in Ife, He had his people take me and Mother Khadija into a room and we took off our clothes, not naked of course, <laughs> and he wrapped me in a purple cloth with real gold interweave, woven in all the cloth. I got it. I ain't going to tell you where it is. <laughs> when he came in, he came in with his page holding his sword. Right. Letting you know that he has the power of life and death in his hands. He instilled me, his followers, laid down prostate yes, straight on the ground in front of me. Yes, and then when it was time for me to leave, his page started walking in front of him. I beside him, my car is waiting for me. And when we got to the car, he said to the page, give him my soul. And the page looked at him in shock, and he snatched the sword yes, sir. and put it in my hand. The Abuna shake. The shake of all shakes who's in Medina. Yes, sir. Put him up on the screen. He is respected as one of the top spiritual authorities in the world who lived in Medina and received me in his humble dwelling. When he laid eyes on me, he spoke these words with strength. Shah Ja'a. 
शाजा शाजा it means courage boldness bravery valor guts brawler spunk he knew that farcon was one of the most courageous men in the world because he has called satan out for the fight He said to me, brother, I pray for you 500 times a day. And this was also mentioned by one of his students. Yes, sir. When I went downstairs to have some tea, a little argument was going on That's right. upstairs. I, I, I wasn't paying it any That's attention. Right. That's right. But on my departure, he gave the minister his cloak yes, sir. his cloak. cape in arabic it's called mishla which means inheritance and authority yes sir whatever he was over he gave it to me it's no longer in medina it's no longer in, in medina. medina it's here put it over my shoulder <laughs> He gave me his staff. His spoken staff. His staff in Arabic is called asaya, which means authority. Now I'm just traveling in the world making friends. Meeting friends, right. and now they're telling me something about myself that I was not aware of. Yes, they yeah, they do know. They do know. They now, in Nigeria, in a thousand years of Durbas, the minister is only the ninth individual to receive a durba as large as the one they gave to me such honored figures are Haley Selassie Prince Charles Queen Elizabeth II and the minister is only the ninth individual to receive a durba that large There's so many honors that they gave to me. Sheikh Jamjoon in Saudi Arabia prevailed upon the king and the government to invite me to Arabia. When I went to Saudi Arabia, they honored me with a police escort to the holy city of Mecca. Reverend Al Sampson, that is here, he went to Mecca with me. He went to the holy city of Qum in Iran with me. They mobbed me so after I spoke the students, Musti had to punch one of them. Because they were trying to touch me. Moo didn't know what the hell they were trying to do. This is your brother. 
the only man that could have called for a million men and nearly two million came. Who am I? When my father said, when you find out who you are, you're going to have to hold yourself down. Here's a, a beautiful chalice. chalice, silver, in a cup that the chalice is placed in. Get the picture. Two Jewish rabbis yes, stayed for hours downstairs in the lobby of our hotel. Yes, and they came upstairs finally. Mr. Harry Belafonte was in my suite. We were talking. And the Jewish rabbis gave me this. And believe me, I, people give me stuff. But I was so dumb, I, I, I didn't know what this is, you know. But I went home and I read the words. Yes, sir. To the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. You are the Messiah of the world. Look at this. And you are the Messiah to every human who wants to be civilized. That is uh, Brother Talik from the Reality Temples on Earth channel. And if you get a chance uh, to subscribe, please do, please do subscribe to his channel. He's a he's a good brother. You know, he's trying to he's doing good work and he wants to do good constructive things. He has good information to provide. So please do check out his channel if you get a chance. <laughs> what I tried to tell you from the beginning. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That didn't happen back there. Yes, sir. It's happening right while you're alive looking at it. I represent the Messiah. I represent the Jesus and I am that Jesus.
if I am not, take my life. But look at your brother. Every day they're after me. Every day they're saying something evil about me. What have I done? Of which of my good works do you stone me? You make the drug addicts, we clean them up. You make my little sisters, turn them into prostitutes, and we raise them up. You bring guns and drugs into the black community, having our people kill one another, and we clean them up. When you come and hear me preach, your eyes come open. The deaf hear, the dumb speak, the lame walk. And when I made the call, in 1995 to black people that was like Jesus calling Lazarus and Lazarus came forth now let's go to St. John the 8th chapter see Jesus I need to take a drink this is the truth the real thing water Not from the faucet of Flint, Miss You. Just follow this. We have to we have to end now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Look. I lost that point. St. John. Thank you. Jesus and the Jews had an argument. Name me one preacher in America that has talked to the Jews like I do. Jesus and the Jews were arguing. And the Jews told Jesus, we are Abraham's seed. But Jesus said, if you were Abraham's seed, you would do the works of Abraham. He was an upright man. The Quran says he was not of the polytheists. The Jews came back a little stronger. We came from God. Even God is our father. Ain't that what they say? We're the chosen of God. But Jesus said, if God were your father, you would love me because I proceeded forth from God and now you seek to kill me a man that has told you the truth I offered them my life if they could find one word of my father's teaching that is a lie To see our people free. Prove that I have lied to my people. Prove that I'm an anti Semite. Prove that I'm a misogynist. Prove that I hate gay and lesbian and transgender and queer people. Prove it! Not one hair of a Jew's head has been harmed by us. 
we don't go around beating up people who say they're gay or queer or lesbian. I teach them with love and they come to me. So why are they so upset? Because the Quran says they argued with God and they said, respite me till the day when they are raised. And God said, surely you are of the respited ones. And Satan said, well, I'm going to come at them in your straight path. And I'll come to them from before them, from behind them, from their left side, from their right side. I'll make them all deviate. Yes. I'm the man that's saying these things. Yes, right. That's written in your scriptures that yes, sir. Jesus argued with them about. I wasn't auditioning for the role of Jesus. I didn't know nothing about the play. I just started working and my teacher kept calling me. Call, come, 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 come. Now I find out that the cross is for me. Now I find out that they're holding me up right now. See, the cross was a Roman symbol that they used to crucify people to make them a public spectacle. Here I am. This is what you want to do. I can't fight you. I can just talk to my God about you. You see, Elijah is my spiritual father. You think he's dead. I told you he's alive. He's at the right hand of the father that made him. And from heaven, he communicates with me. He tried me and told me I'll never teach another man like I taught Brother Malcolm until I thoroughly tried him. Paul was one of the disciples, but far above them. He never saw Jesus, but he was communicating with Jesus from on high. Yes, sir. That's where my food is coming from. I can stand here for hours. Ask me questions. I don't care what it is you want to know. My father knows and he feeds me. I've answered over 5,000 questions on Twitter and I've never known the questions in advance. I wait for my father to feed me and whatever he tells me to say, that I say. And whatever he bids me to do, that I do. Eli, Eli, Lama Sabachthani. He said he calls for Elijah. Let us see if Elijah will take him down. Hey, my brother, you know I had to call you. And thank you personally again. I cannot describe to you how happy I was to meet you in person, Fido. That was just like amazing. And I just want to tell you thank you again. I, I cannot thank you enough. And I just, I love your girlfriend's personality. She's just so straightforward, so fun, so BS. I love it. And I hope y'all get married. Y'all get married if I get to the wedding. Anyway, I want to thank you both. And you know what? Like I said, you are a phenomenal speaker. When you got up and spoke, I really understood more about what you were trying to say. And I know you busy, but I really think 
that you would do great with traveling around the country and doing like speaking to people's lives because your presence is like major and you're entertaining and it gets sincere and it comes across really, really well. Like it's one thing to see you on on uh, YouTube talking, but when I saw you in person last night speaking to the crowd, it was very captivating. And I would love to just see you do that. Like I'm fucking really impressed. I'm not impressed by a lot of people. But I'm impressed by you and I'm honored to meet you. And I'll have I'll have enough words to describe how happy I was to see you there last night. And how many things that I want to give you. And now that I'm, my schedule is freed up a little bit here, um, just let me know what you want me to do. And I will help you in as, as much in many ways as I can. Just let me know what you want me to do. Because I know I realize you're busy and it's a lot of work. I get that. Uh, and when you get a little bit of time, call me. And once again, please tell the, your friends that you brought out. Tell them I said thank you. And please tell your girlfriend again I said thank her. And I hope she's so happy. She is hilarious. Oh, my God. Love her. Bye. Um, I'll talk to y'all again soon. And thank you again. All right. God bless you. To replay this message, press 1. Okay, okay. We back in the house. We back in the house, and um, we are going to go ahead and bring this whole episode to conclusion. And uh, look, I must admit, again, I did not uh, just sit back and listen to this four-hour diatribe. Okay. I just did not do it. And in order to make this video, I downloaded the uh, the speech and went through it very very slowly to try to hear what I what I heard cuz I did hear the speech but skipping through the video, I did not I missed some stuff here that I know that he said, but apparently I, I I'm skipping through cuz I'm not I'm I'm, I'm going to tell you I'm not going to just be I'm not going to I have already listened to this man's speeches for years, for nine straight years, and even after I left the Nation of Islam, I was still listening to him. I'm not going to, because see, this person impress you. He does not impress me. Says a lot of fantastical stuff or whatever, but I'm not impressed. Y'all are easily impressed. I'm not impressed. I'm grown. You want to impress me? You got to bring some grown stuff. Don't Keep telling me about your invisible animals, your in, your invisible plane, your batarang, and your kryptonite, and your spider web. Listen to Farrakhan. You might as well be listening listening to the Justice League of America or the Avengers or something like that. I'm not impressed with all this fairy tale stuff. If that's what you're into, so be it. I cannot help you, but but the people have the right. Just like I did back in the day, they have a right to hear an alternative. So I'm bringing the alternative so you can compare reality to fantasy. And you make up your mind what you want. You want reality or you want the crack? You want reality or you want the cocaine? You want reality or do you want Jesus? Do you want reality or do you want more comedic, metaphysical, astral? Flying out your body, you, you never die, turn into a ball of gas, fly out in the universe, or whatever, all that Justice League of America stuff. Bugs Bunny Roadrunner crap. If you are impressed by that, then so be it. But I'm not talking to you anyway. You're a child. You are impressed by Bugs Bunny. I'm not impressed by Bugs Bunny. I'm not into that fantasy stuff. Let me see. I took some notes here as I skipped through. And let me let me see. Uh, well, basically, I wanted the clip. Well, I remember. I know that I heard him say, basically, this what this what has happened. And did y'all notice how he when he says Master Farad Muhammad? You know, he always try to put that emphasis like he's an Arabic expert or something. But look at here. 
Look, look at him. Okay. I know there was a piece missing. And you can correct me, but I'm pretty sure it's there. I probably had to go through the video. But basically what he was saying is that he's connected. Well, actually that he is the Jesus. He's the modern day Jesus. You don't have to look about 2,000 years ago. He is the Jesus. The Jews are attacking him just like they did Jesus. All the things that happened to Jesus, he's put on a cross. Everybody's after him. He's the good guy. He's the Jesus. And there's a and there's all this burden on his shoulder like Jesus. That's how he's described. However, the teachers of the Arab Elijah Muhammad, Elijah Muhammad did not teach against Jews. You can read Message of the Black Man, Fall of America, or any of these books, the teachers of the nation of Islam. The Elijah Muhammad did not specify Jews. He said the white man is the devil. Caucasian people, there is no race called Jews. These Jews are Caucasian people. European, Russian, in origin, German, Jews. That's who these people are. That's who they are. So these people, they are Caucasian. Elijah Muhammad said the white man is the devil. He did not say the Jew was the devil. He said the white man. All pink people, their nature is that of a devil. That's what he taught. Farrakhan is the one that is targeting Jews. At the same time, he has Jewish friends. At the same time, these Jews that, that don't like him, he's on their radio, he's on their cable, their direct TV, their CNN, their Fox News, whatever outlet, you will find Farrakhan sniggling and grinning in their face. If I don't like you, you're not going to use my television station. If I don't like you, you're not going to use my radio. If these people really don't like, if I don't like you, I'm not going to give you approval of your Million Man March. Mind you, he talks about how great he is. And I, and I call two million men. Now, see, look, this is why I don't like fake folks. See, y'all got to catch, y'all got to listen to these frauds, these scam artists. You're really not listening. You're caught up in the hype. Now, when it comes to this Million Man March, yes, Farrakhan was the author. But this is how Farrakhan plays that. When he wants to be really, really humble, he'll tell, tell you and go before the people talk about, uh, well, uh, I can't take the... I've heard him say it. He said, I can't take the credit for the Million Man March. It was a lot of us that came together. It was my idea, but it was a lot of us to come together and we made the Million Man March. We caught a million, two million men to Washington, D.C. That's what he said. But now, since he wants to be Jesus and he wants to show you that he's supposed to have all this power, I called all these men the Million Man March. If you got so much power, why do you call the whole 40 the 70 million black folks that's living in this nation of Washington, D.C. Since you so Jesus, since you got all this damn power. And then you turn around and you failed them. Your million man march did not produce nothing. Did not do nothing then. And your justice or else and all your other marches produced nothing. Well, they say, well, Farrakhan can only show you the way. And then it's up to you. If it's, if it's up to me, what do I need him for? What do I need him to show me the way for? And why is he the only one connected to Jesus? How come you're not connected to Jesus? How come I'm not connected to God? How come you're not connected to Jesus? Why is he so special? Why do God have these favors, these picks and favors? These are all these questions. Y'all should, should think about this stuff. That's favoritism. How would you like to be in a house with your parents and your parents only choose one special child to give all their attention to, all their information to. You wouldn't like that. This is God. This is supposed to be the Father. And this God pick and choose certain individuals. And you don't mean nothing. I don't mean nothing. These special divine individuals. Mind you, mind you, 
Farrakhan or none of these other scammers can prove that God said or, does, said or communicated to, to them in any kind of way. You just take that word for it. Because you mesmerize with their slick talk. And that's all it is. It's slick talk. Farrakhan goes on to talk about that, uh, that this power backs him up. As soon as he talks about a snowstorm or an earthquake or whatever it is, before he can get, uh, get it out of his mouth, then it happens. This stuff has been going on. That's, uh, uh, see, that's how these people trick us. I can do the same thing. I can talk about a snowstorm. I can talk about earthquake. I can talk about all these different things. This stuff been going on in, in nature forever. Now, if Farrakhan wants to prove that, that his, his boys are behind an earthquake, you tell us a time and a date. And then your boys should be able to direct that tornado or that hurricane towards your enemies and leave you the hell alone. But he can't. He cannot do it. When it rains, it rains on everybody. When it snows, it snows on everybody. Your God don't have a power to direct nothing because your God don't have any power and the reality is your God don't exist. All manufactured feel good stuff for those, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but I have to say this, you, you have to have low IQ. You're not thinking properly. You're not. All this Bugs Bunny Disneyland talk. That's all it is. And then you notice on the stage, she talks about, I go all around the world and people give me all these gifts and they honor me. You, you, they act like you're a bum. They see you, you don't have a coat. You don't, don't look like you dress properly. So they give you a coat and a hat and some shoes. They treat you like a bum. And did you notice he was on stage and they put that little coat thing on him? He looked like a pimp because he pimping y'all. <laughs> He look like a pimp. He pimping y'all. Okay, so you saying that you, you're so honorable. All these people respect you. So what is the benefit? What do you bring home to benefit the 40 to 70 million descendants of slaves born in America having dark skin? Here you are charging for Savior's Day. If these people honor you so much and praise you so much, how come you have to charge for Savior's Day? You got to give tickets and you got you to gotta beg for money. Constantly beg for money. If somebody honor you, if somebody like you, they just start, they just start throwing the dollars at you. It's not happening like that. That's why you're still a beggar. Because you really want to be like them. You want to be like the ones that's throwing you this chump chain. An old raggedy hand-me-down jacket. And our hand-me-down cane, all this used stuff. It's honorable because you think that these people position is high and mighty when the only position that's supposed to be high and mighty is God. And you praise it and think that a cane and a hat and all these other materialistic gifts by men is something. I'm not impressed by their garbage. No, sir, you can keep that. What can you do for my people? That's my only question. I am here not because to try to, to impress you or for you to praise me. I'm here to speak with you. What can you do to help me improve the condition of my people? I don't want your hat. I don't want your coat. Thank you. That's very nice. If you give it to me, I'll probably I'll part it so people don't have to buy tickets to save you today. Then he says something like, okay. That didn't make any sense. He says, I represent Jesus. But then he, he says, I am the Jesus. of what, do, what are you talking about? Elijah Muhammad, he's trying to say that Elijah Muhammad is Christ or the real Jesus. And he represents that, that Christ. But then he turns around and says, I, he is the Jesus. Confusing as hell. Are y'all really listening to what this man is, is, is talking about? Mind you that Elijah Muhammad never claimed to be the modern day Christ. He never claimed to be the modern day Jesus. He, if anything, 
Elijah Muhammad claimed to be the modern day prophet Muhammad. That's the only thing I ever heard. He never claimed to be. Or are you playing or are you saying that Elijah Muhammad is God and Jesus and the Holy Ghost? Is you, is you trying to play? Are you trying to do the same thing that the Christians do? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost? The three into one type deal? You try, Are you doing that also? See, this stuff is all, y'all, woo, it's too confusing. And since you, you don't, y'all don't think, and they just clapping, they just clapping. <laughs> this is confusing as hell to somebody who's trying to figure all this out because it's not making any sense. You represent Jesus, but you are Jesus. It don't make any sense. <laughs> and then, if Elijah Muhammad, and then you're a Muslim. You're a Muslim. You're not a Christian. Here's a Muslim claiming to be Jesus. It don't make any sense because it's all a scam. I want the I want the Christian money. I want the Muslim money. I want any money I can get my hands on. It's all a hoax, it's all a fraud, it's all feel-good rhetoric, and y'all listen to this, because in your mind, it's, it's, it sounds all good, and, 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 and it, it's just mind-boggling, because you're not thinking. He, go on, he goes on to say, and he knows, see, when you say that, he knows, he knows that he's not going to be challenged. He knows that this, he's not going to call the bluff. He knows that he's not, his bluff is not going to be called because he's not going to put him, himself in a position so his bluff can be called. He says, I'm willing to die if anything my, my uh, messenger, my, my Christ told me is wrong. I'm willing, I'm willing, I'm willing to, to, to die. <laughs> What a showman. Remember, they used to call Louis Farrakhan, Louis Walcott, the charmer. He knows how to charm. He knows how to get, he know. hey, he knows, he knows how to smile. He knows how to, he knows what to say to you to get what it was. Yeah. Okay, sir. You might as well get ready to die because your, your nation of Islam teaches talk about a mother plane. There is no mother plane. Show us your mother plane. It's a lie. Show us your tribal shabazz. Archaeological evidence. Show us that the black man has been in existence for 76 trillion years again. It's a lie. Time for you to die, sir. Show us and prove, show and prove that Elijah Muhammad is alive and talk to you. How is he communicating with you through ESP? Why is he doing this? Show us. It's a lie. It's a lie. And you're not willing to die on your lie. It's simple as that. <clears throat> so he fabric, he's fabricating this story because he is the one that directed attention to Jews. The nation of Islam never directed its attention to Jews. It always was the white man is the devil. So that's so he can paint this picture like he's Jesus Christ. Oh, why are they doing to doing this to me? Oh, the Jews this like he's Jesus Christ. See, all this is fabricated stuff. I've never harmed a Jew. No, sir. The nation of Islam has never harmed a Jew. The nation of Islam does not harm, um, does not harm um, white folks or the white devil. Period. Do you know, or do you want to know? Do you know, sir, who you want to harm? This is the type of person that you do kill. This is the type of person that you do kill. This is the kind of person that you harm. Your own. The only time the nation of Islam has ever caused harm to anybody else was strictly because of self-defense. The nation of Islam 
intentionally and purposely harass this man, threaten his wife, his children, this man, until they finally murdered him. Oh, no, no, sir. No, sir, you are, you are absolutely correct. You are absolutely correct. You do not, you do not hurt Jews. No, you kill black folks. You kill the people of soul. He further says that Elijah Muhammad talks to, to him in heaven, from heaven. Well, see, look, see, oh, we're going to go out on this, y'all. The nation of Islam teaches that heaven and hell is just a condition. Look, heaven and hell is just a condition of life. He's saying that Elijah Muhammad is talking and communicating to him from the heavens. What, what heavens are you talking about? Are you talking about the space? Space? What are you talking about? Is it space? Because heaven and hell is just a condition of life. See, the whole thing is all messed up. How can, you, how can we give this man a pass? Here you are. You, 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 you. The first annual PPU retreat and vacation was an absolute success. To come out of the virtual world, the online world, and into a tangible one where we can hug each other and look into each other's eyes and share even more intimate, vulnerable moments and spaces, laugh together, cry together. I mean, we were on an emotional roller coaster that brought us into an even deeper space of fulfillment. We broke bread together. We supported each other in, in the most interesting moments. We built our dreams together. It was such a beautiful experience and I look forward to building with this family for years to come. And you don't realize it. You don't realize it that God has been in prison. Mm. The devil was able to imprison God. So right inside your own self, your God self has been in prison, and you have a false sense of self running rampant inside the temple. This is why you understand what I'm saying. You, yes, sir. we have to bring reality's temple here on earth. Reality's <laughs> temple here on earth. Because yes, sir. We have to realize the enemy is running rampant inside this temple, and we have to recover. Yes, sir. Because white supremacy is a clinical disease. It is a disease, and the disease has been running for so long that they don't need the, 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 the white man don't have to continue to kick your ass mm -hmm. on uh, uh, up front. He has made it so that he has gotten into you like a virus and you kick your own ass. Yes, sir. And it even has trickled down to some of us right here in the so-called conscious community. Right. <laughs> Here you are. We talk about Umar Johnson is a scam artist. We talk about Brother Polite is a scam artist and Zaza Ali and all these different people that are supposed to be scam artists. Louis Farrakhan falls into the same category, but he gets a pass. Well, no, he does not get a pass. He's been a fraud. He's been scamming people. He's not real. He's been doing this for 40 years. He has nothing of substance to show that he's a benefit or ever been a benefit to the soul community. Show me. And you know when they talk about showing me, the only thing they can do is show a rundown farm, a couple of, a couple of trucks, a broke down salon restaurant in Chicago, a, a few tiddlywink schools, things of this nature. 
this this Christ, this Jesus man, this guy that calls all these brothers to, to the march on Washington, has had probably close to a billion dollars passed through his hands and has nothing to show for it. Now, if you and me are planning a birthday party and you give me a hundred dollars for some candy and I bring you back a bag of Snickers, are you going to be satisfied with that with all the money I gave you and the only thing you're going to bring back is a five dollar bag of Snickers? You're going to be mad. You're going to, you're going to ask Where's the beef? You're going to ask, where's, where's the rest of my money? What'd you do with the rest of my money? So far I can show you all this tiddly wink, little garbage, the man probably has had over the last 40 years, and he's still begging, he's still begging for money. He's had almost a billion dollars passed through his hands, and the only thing he got to show is a bag of Snickers. Where's the rest of the $95? Well, it's all right. No, it's not all right. We need all our resources. We need everything that we can get because of our condition. Are you serious? Really? Come on now. You keep giving this man a pass. One of these days, I'm telling you, you're going to feel sorry and you're going to pay for giving your time and your money to this charlatan because that's what he is. Six, a sixter. A leech living off the back of Elijah Muhammad. Nothing original about him. And Elijah Muhammad said, don't change my teaching. So that means he don't give a damn about what Elijah Muhammad said because he's gone to a higher level. Elijah Muhammad, oh, I forgot. He tossed Elijah Muhammad. So Elijah Muhammad told him, you can change my teaching. Oh, okay, I get it. Okay, all right. So forget what Elijah Muhammad said. Just do it far kind of way. And he does not show you no proof, no real proof that Elijah Muhammad is communicating with him. No kind of proof. How old would, how old would Elijah Muhammad be in 2019? And what kind of health would Elijah Muhammad have? He was sickly back then. Oh, after, oh, he went into the mothership and they healed him. And he can live forever or something. Oh, whatever. I, the whole thing. I, I, I'm done with it. I'm done. Believe what y'all want to believe. I just know the only way I fell for that stuff because I was a little boy, I was a child, and I didn't know no better. What's y'all excuse? <laughs> with that said, I'm going to be Audi 5000. And just like uh, our soul brother, Don Cornelius used to say, as in parting, I wish us love, peace, and soul. P.S. P.S. Now, if I'm wrong, if I'm in error, y'all, please correct me. But you got you to gotta come correct. You got to come correct. You got to bring clear, convincing, and overwhelming evidence. It's got to, it, has to, it has to fit the criteria of common sense, logic, reason, things of that nature. Otherwise, it's belief, and you don't have to have facts or nothing. Just believe and hope for the best. And that's all y'all can do, messing around with Farrakhan and his shenanigans. <laughs> that's all you can do is hope for the best. And unfortunately, it's not going to turn out too pretty. Well, I'm out of y'all. Peace until next time. Would y'all do this next part with us? Because you see, it's because of you guys that...